Morning to you boys and girls, it's Friday the 25th of August 2017, welcome along to another United Kingdom tour, looks like another nice day outside, oh yes I shall be walking to the swimming pool shortly after the show today uh, to do my morning exercise, at one point yesterday I was the only person in the show, uh, in the show, in the in the pool like, yeah, yesterday, I got in there, there was only me and um, one other lady in there, so we were able to take a side each and going up and down. A lot of people in there moaning about the children off on school because uh, we do get some children who are staying in the hotel, along, of course, with their parents who uh, come into the swimming pool and upset the regulars. Oh, 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 I don't, oh, I don't like the kids in the school, in the pool. Oh, I can't wait for them to go back to school and all this business. Well, you know, we like to go swimming when we were children. You kind of fit in, don't you? It's amazing the amount of people that think they own the swimming pool. They absolutely, and there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. What always amazes me at, at, at how is someone comes in, like, okay, so we've got some people in the pool who are going round at some speed, and I hope you don't mind me including myself in that, but I go round at some speed. I do. I'm not massively fast, but I'm a reasonable speed going, and it might be someone else, another lady in there. Uh, there's actually a, ch a lovely Chinese lady who comes in there, and she's always, always very pleasant to me, and uh, we fit in. You know, and sometimes she overtakes me and sometimes, not so often, I overtake her. And if, if like, I get to the end, OK, and she's really close to me and then gets to the end a second later, I'll wait and say, yeah, go on, you go next. And she say, thank you and carry on. Get out of her way, you know. But there are other people in there and they're so slow. <sighs> A bit like waiting for the bloke at the post office delivery place to get your parcels. Oh, God. We must have the slowest. He's like a snail. He is, I seriously tell you, the, <laughs> the Bracknell sorting office, the bloke who gives out the parcels there is like a bloody snail. And the queue is completely oblivious to the queue that is building up. On f on Saturday, I think it was... No, was it? No, it wasn't Saturday. I won't go there on Saturday. On Friday last week, <clears throat> I got there to pick up a part a small parcel. And it was small. You could have forced it into the letterbox. You absolutely could have forced that into the letterbox. Um, anyway, I went to collect that. The bus. There was one, two people in front of me. And my God, is he slow. He gets a bit of paper, uh, uh, and then and on, on the computer, on no no word of a lie. Okay, so he's got the computer like this, and he's look, he's got the he's got the card in one hand, right? He's got the card in one hand like that. He's got the computer. And he walks so slowly. Why on earth has he been given that job? <clears throat> it's awful. And I was waiting. And um, funnily enough, Ronnie had taken me in the car. I must have been in there 15 minutes. There's only two people in front of me. Um, and I was third. And while I was standing there, another 10 built up behind me. And as I walked down the line, I said, expect to be standing there an hour, my love. He is going at the speed of a snout. And there's only one in there. I'm sure they used to have two people in there. There used to be one bloke in there, and he'd take two or three at a time. So, yeah, I'll give us your card, mate. Give us your card, mate. And he'd fill them out and go out the back with three cards and bring back three items. Three people gone from the queue. Bracknell Sorting Office, Down Mill Road, slowest. And they ought to give an award, shouldn't they? <laughs> Maybe I'll have that. I, I'm going to print up a certificate and send it to them. World's slowest sorting office man. Oh, it's so annoying. It really is. Anyway, back to the swimming pool. But how did we get onto that? <clears throat> oh, yes, people in the swimming pool. And there's a couple of people. And they come in here and they're so slow in that swimming pool. And they can see we're going round at the pool. And they get in and they start swimming. Uh, uh. Uh, uh, not only do they start swimming, but they don't stay at the side. They wander into the middle. So if you're trying to overtake someone the other side, you can't do it. 
And I remember the Chinese girl. I mean, she's not a friend of mine, but I always say hello to her. And we kind of res most people respect each other in the swimming pool. If there's someone fast, get out the way. I get out of the way for someone who's faster than me, certainly all the time. And um, I've I've seen older people having a go at this Chinese girl uh, for not waiting for them. Well, swim faster than your silly old bag. What's wrong with these people? And then there are the others who are professional swimmers. Now, admittedly, in the particular swimming pool I go to, there aren't many professional swimmers. But when you do get one, God, you need to keep out their way. Who do they think they are? Even, I've got to say, even Anne. Anne gets a bit upset with them sometimes and she makes a point of going backstroke and and, and uh, kicking her legs as hard, <laughs> kicking her legs as hard as she can, and everything is splashing all over the place, even in my eye. And it's funny actually when you're swimming, you know, you, I certainly do try and keep the water out of my eyes. And you can be swimming and you can do ten lengths, and then someone splashes, and it gets in your eye and it stings. What's all that about? Because you're already in, you've already been in the pool half an hour. Slow people in the swimming pool, very, 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 very annoying. It really is. So I did that. I came back here. Uh, I did some lunch. Uh, what did I have yesterday? I can't even remember. I think I got something out of the freezer. Something I'd already uh, cooked previously. I'm sure it was. Uh, yes, a corn mushroom stewy type thing, which was nice, which I did with some rice. And then while that was on, I thought I'd water my plants out the front. Uh, and I'm in and out with the, because uh, I've got water butts as well. So I empty the water butts, water butts into a into a into a um into a bucket, then the bucket into a what do you call it? A watering can, big watering can. So I'm in and out like that. I'm coming in. Oh, I can smell pat cat poo. I thought, oh no! And I look down. It's on my floor. Cat poo on my floor from the shoe where I've been going out into the front garden because that's kind of a a bit of a communal area out there that I've sort of you know looked after. Oh, no, not cat poo on the bottom of your shoes. I hate it. So you've got your bit of paper out there and you like that, aren't you? And of course, now it's on the kitchen floor. So I've picked up the bits that I can pick up and they're still squidgy and soft. Oh, the smell. No. And of course, while the meal is on, I've had to mop the kitchen floor. It's so clean, my kitchen floor at the moment with my eucalyptus and... Um, I was going to say eucalyptus and morphine. <laughs> it's not morphine, is it? Isn't that something that sends you... Uh, 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 the about morphine, please. Uh, morphine. Give me morphine. <laughs> what was it? Eucalyptus and um, something else? Can't remember what the other thing was. Which I put in, which I got from Waitrose. Five quid, that is. <laughs> Floor cleaner. Five quid for a bottle. But you need the tiniest amount. Half a capful, right, and it still suds up on the floor. Then you leave it for a couple of minutes, and then, then you kind of rinse it, and that's uh, nice and clean now, but I can't stand treading in cat poo. Oh, dear, one of those things, isn't it? Uh, let me see, what else did I do then? Oh, then we went to, um, uh, uh, I went, I got the car out the garage. I wanted to go to Waitrose and the bank, so we parked in the Waitrose car park. They've got they've got those new cameras now. Number plate recognition. Oh yes. So you only get 90 minutes in there now. Mind you, we never stayed for 90 minutes. Because of course what happens is that people park for free in the Waitrose car park. They don't even buy anything in there. That's why they stopped making the teas free. Well, I mean it's free for, for me as a customer. But um, what was happening before, you didn't even have to buy anything. You could just go into the cafe, I'll have a free cup of tea, please. And the workmen all used to go there and sit down. It's outrageous. Outrageous, dear. You can't do that anymore. Well, you can't park in the car park all day anymore now either. 90 minutes, which is plenty of time. So we parked in the car park and I'm walking over to the bank. As you know, we've got a lot of building work going on at the moment in Bracknell. We've got a brand new shopping centre, which is opening on the 7th of September. Oh, yes. So we're walking round and the bit where we usually cross over the road is now closed off with like, I don't know, plastic um, barrier things. You know, they used to be concrete. Now they use plastic ones and they fill them with water, which uh, I wonder we'd come out with that. That's an excellent idea, isn't it? You know the barriers? I mean, you either have the metal barriers that they get out for um, uh, for those ghastly music events, don't they? 
well, you know, you know, Glastonbury and all that, and the, the things like that. You you queue around, like you've got these metal things, and you queue. You got those. You got the heavy metal, the, the heavy concrete ones that get lifted on a crane, don't they? A crane has to bring them and put them down like that. Now they've got these plastic ones, which are, you know, you can carry. You'd be able to carry one with one hand. And they just fill them up with water. And that seems to hold them in position. Isn't that an excellent idea? Anyway, the bit where we usually temporarily cross over the road, they've like section, they've barriered that off. I've had to walk all the way down to the traffic lights and all the way back up just across the damn road. Of course, Ronnie's not having any of it, is he? He's jumped over the barrier. Oh, why, why create trouble? That's what I say. It only took an extra two minutes to walk down to the thing, so that's what I did. He jumped over the barrier. Jump, dear. Jumped. It was like Black Beauty. Ba 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 da 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 da. Oh, you don't know what that is, Black Beauty. Oh, it was a wonderful TV program on ITV about a black horse. Oh, wonderful, wonderful stories. What was the girl's name in that? She was nice, the girl's name in that. Um, so went to the bank, um, came back again. I walked right around again. He jumped back over the fence, did a little bit of shopping in Waitrose. Um, I think that was it, really. Was that all I did yesterday? Hang on a minute. Let me just refer to my works. Oh, yes, our shopping centre will be open on the 7th of September. Brand new shopping centre. Lots in there. Massive Primark. You've never seen a Primark. I think all the Primark shops are quite big. But this place is massive, this Primark, all ready to be open. Marks and Spencer's is already open. And a little toy shop called The Entertainer. But masses of new shops open on the 7th of September. And just be awful traffic around that time. Actually, I think I'm away that day. Am I away then? Let me have a look. Oh, yes, I'm away, I'm away that day anyway, so good. I'll avoid the traffic. I won't be there for that. Carl, they'll all be piling in there. Oh, we can't, can't wait to go down the new shops. Oh, parking and blooming traffic there. It'd be awful. it would be awful. I hope it doesn't become like Reading here. That is a dump. Don't ever go... OK, the Oracle is all right. There's two parts to Reading. That's like the bit where the Oracle is. That's nice. And there's a bit where the main shops are, like Sainsbury's, um, even John Lewis is, is there, and um, Nationwide Build Society. That bit there, that is a dump. And there's ghastly people walking around all over the place. Ghastly! You hold on to that mobile phone and that purse while you're walking around Reading, dear. Very, very frightening. So I did that, came back here, had a little sleep, got up. Uh, I made my spaghetti arabata sauce, my arabata sauce, last night. And I have a recipe and I add other things to it. I was going to do the video, but I didn't have my video light with me, so we didn't video that. Uh, and that was very nice. When Ronnie came in earlier, I, I finished making it. Ronnie was at his ass and he drove over and I'm sitting in the living room. He said, oh, I'm coming over now. OK, so I left the front door open. And... um. Uh, we can do that. We, we can do that in Bracknell, dear. Oh, yes. It's like neighbours. It's like neighbours around it. We all leave our doors open. We wander in and out. Any moment now, my neighbour might pop his head around the corner. Oh, sorry, Chris, can I borrow a cup of sugar? Yes, go, go, just take it. Don't ask. Just take. Take. Take, take, take. Can you do that where you live? Uh, in London? No, I don't think you can, can you? What, you've got gates on the doors and everything there, haven't you? My God, five locks, intercoms, alarm bells. Flashing lights, security this, security that. Is there a little man where you are, where you live? At the entrance to your block of flats? Oh, good morning, sir. Can I help you? Any parcels for you, sir? Any parcels? Something like that. My mate did that job and he was really posh flats in Southwark. Southwark. Southwark in <laughs> Southwark in London. He did that job. He was a doorman there. Um, so I'm sitting there having my uh, arabata sauce with wholemeal spaghetti. Very nice. And my head is really sweating because there's a lot of chilli in it. And Ronnie came in and I heard him in the kitchen. He starts coughing. <coughs> I said, you all right? I shouted out, you all right? He said, no, I'm not. And he came in the living room. He said, blimey, how much chilli have you got in that? He said, the fumes are making me cough as I'm walking through the kitchen. <laughs> oh, well, only about a packet and a half. That's all. Is that excessive? There's no point in putting in a little bit of chilli. What's the point in putting a bit of chilli in? 
and not being able to taste it. I don't think so. So we've got a whole packet of chili in there and about half a packet of garlic because I buy the frozen one in Waitrose. It's about £1.65 and you get this great big bag and you can measure it out if you want. No, I'll put the packet in and be done with it, dear. It's nice to have your head blown off as you're eating that. And um, so we watched a bit of television. He'd already had his dinner. Watched a bit of television. And we were watching Slum Landlords. No, Nightmare Tenants Slum Landlords last night, which is why which is, uh, uh, I like to watch that programme. And there was this poor lady, actually, who owned the most beautiful cottage, not college, cottage. She owned the most beautiful cottage uh, bungalow type thing in uh, Wales, in Welsh Wales, in Snowdonia. With uh, it looked like it was within the national park ba boundary. Oh, it was beautiful. This little place. Uh, it was like a, an L shape. Okay, so like like an L shape, and it was on its own, around fields, horses, scenery. Oh, beautiful place. And it turns out the old bag who, who rents it off her hasn't paid the rent for any for, for ages. Anyway, of course, you know, eventually. So she stands out. She's quite well spoken. The lady who owns the cottage is quite well spoken. Clearly a conservative voter. You could tell that. You could tell that. So she's well spoken and she's very upset. They're not paying the rent and they won't let people in to do repairs or anything like that. And while the camera's filming, the old bag and, of course, very untidy looking son turn up. You know, in this Ford, in this old Ford car. Uh, you ain't doing no filming and all this business. She got big black marks around her eyes where she hasn't put her makeup or where she's obviously had makeup on at some point, possibly four days later, and it's all worn off. So she's got she's got these black marks. The son looks like he needs to have his hair cut badly or, or, or washed or preferably both. And it had never been done. Anyway, they haven't been paying a month from, uh, the rent for months uh, because they say the place is full of damp and um, <clears throat> and other things wrong with it. Now, it turns out the woman who owns the cottage uh, n knows about this because she, she told her. Uh, but every time she tries to send builders and people in there to rectify the problems, they get sent away. I mean... You know, how stupid can you be? So then it all goes to court and she tries to sue her for the loss of rent and to get rid of her out of the house. I mean, you don't want someone like that in one of your houses, do you? And um, uh, and the judge finds in the woman's favour. In oh, No, what was it now? Hang on a minute. No, no, I got that slightly wrong. That the tenant takes the landlord to court, right, for not upkeeping the property not fixing the faults, she, uh, uh, and the landlady, it was the landlady, the landlady wasn't even asked to speak at this court thing, and the judge found in the tenant's favour because the landlady hadn't sorted out all the problems in there. Um, And she, 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 she got a fine, and she wasn't even asked to speak. That don't sound right, does it? Anyway, as time went on, I mean, months and months went past. She was owed a fortune in rent. Eventually, she, she she managed to get rid of this old bag and her son. And she went into the house uh, uh, and the woman had changed the locks. The, land, the, the tenant had changed the locks. So she had to get a locksmith out to drill out the lock. Oh, no, what was it? What happened now? No, that's wrong. Uh, that She changed the locks and posted the keys right in so that you couldn't get to the keys. You could see the keys through the glass. I mean, why would you do that? So, of course, fortunately, they had, they had a long stick and they managed to drag the keys out and got in that way, changed the locks, and the place was a dump. There were rats in there and everything. The mess everywhere, and I just don't understand that. So it's a very good programme to watch. Uh, Nightmare Tenants, Slum Landlords. But this place, this little place in Snowdonia, you should have seen it. Of course, I went straight online and started looking up places in Wales. I'm always interested in how much places cost. You can get you can get something like that probably for about 140 grand in Wales. You really can. I, there, were, there were stone cottages, I kid you, kid you not. If you type, go to Right Move and type in Snowdonia. And then, uh, and then see see what you can get for your money there, and you will be surprised. Beautiful places with beautiful scenery. It's the scenery that does it for me. 
So that was a, a, a nice little day yesterday. Yes. Uh, let's say hello to some of you this morning. Good morning to Adam the Plumber. Once again, sharing the show to his Facebook page. Thank you, Adam. You're very kind. And the rest of you who are sharing the show on your pages as well, then I appreciate that. You know, when you hit that share button thing. Thank you very much. Good morning to Matt Phillips. Good morning, Matt. How are you today? Long time. The lovely Diane is there this morning. Good morning, Diane. Gustav says, good morning. I've missed you, but I'm out now and able to see you. We'll be at Central Station tonight. Let's get smashed. What, at Central Station? You're usually smashed when you turn up there, aren't you? How many bottles of white lightning have you got through so far this morning? Huh? Terrible there. These people are addicted to that cheap cider. Matt says, just keep swimming. I do. I do keep swimming, Matt. It's difficult when there's someone in the way, though, isn't it? Ashley says, good morning. Uh, he's coming along later. Have you just been to um, uh, Spain or somewhere? I'm sure I saw you taking off on a plane the other day to Spain. <laughs> good morning to Dino. Dino joins us this morning. Hello to John Aitken from Nottingham. Hello, Nottingham, home of Granada. Te Is it Granada or Yorkshire television up there? I'm never quite sore. Uh, Ashley says, it sounds like you've been busy. Always busy, Ashley. We can't be sitting here doing nothing, dear. We must be busy at all times. Thank you very much. So there we are. Uh, <clears throat> this morning, I was watching the news this morning, and they start talking about cryptocurrency, and I just don't understand that at all. Do you? Bitcoins. Bitcoins, and apparently Estonia, <laughs> Estonia is going to have their own cryptocurrency. I don't know what cryptocurrency is. Why would I want a Bitcoin? What can I do with a Bitcoin? What can I do with that? You know, can I go into to Waitrose and they are, that's £3.30. Can I pay with Bitcoins, please? I don't think so. What are Bitcoins? Apparently, you have to mine for Bitcoins. I don't get it. I, I really don't understand that at all. Never mind. Um, so that was talking about that on the BBC business program this morning. And apparently that, you know, the Samsung boss, he's, he's going into prison. Samsung, massive organisation, is going into prison. What's his name? Lee J. Young is spending five years in prison for corruption. Mr. Lee was accused of bribery in a scandal that also stole the impeachment of South Korea's former, uh, former president. So, yes, corruption, dear. I cannot be corrupted. Oh, God, the amount of people that owe me money to do things or offer me money to do things. I will not be corrupted. You know, that is why I'm sitting here with a glass of water and not a can of some sort of fizzy drink that a company has paid me large sums of money for to sit here and display it in my cabinets. Huh? However, you can sponsor this show. I'm trying to get this show sponsored by Waitrose Gold Blend Tea Bags. That's what we need. <laughs> Waitrose Gold Blend Tea Bags. Because Samson had a lot of trouble last year with one of their phones, didn't they? Do you remember that? That kept exploding. But it didn't affect their profits at all, apparently, according to them. Um, holidays. Holidays. Look at this. I'm listening to the news this morning. One of the airports... Yesterday was giving you to the euro uh, one pound for 87 cents. My God, that's a disaster. One euro, I think it possibly was Southampton Airport. Is there an airport in Southampton? Was it that one? Can't remember now. But one euro will now only buy you 80, uh, sorry, one pound will only buy you 87 cents yesterday at Southampton Airport. I kid you not. Now, I think when we went to Euro Disney last year, um, I think we were only getting $1.20 then. Or one, no, what are they? One Euro 20 then. Terrible. Now it's 87 cents. If you go away on holiday now, to somewhere in Europe, you will damn well notice your um, your uh, your money will not go very far at all. It really won't. Stay in the UK, I keep telling you. 
No need to ferry our ferry off abroad on a plane or something like that. Don't go. You can have just a good time in this country. All right, the weather might be a bit dodgy now and again, but who cares when you've got beautiful English countryside to walk through, or Scotland or Wales. I vow to thee, my country, Jerusalem on England's green and pleasant land. No need to go aboard. Why do you want those nasty euros in your pocket anyway? It's Monopoly. It's Monopoly money. You don't need euros. Stay in the UK. 87 cents. I mean, that's really bad. Ashley's about to go to Tenerife. Have you got your money yet, Ashley? <laughs> You're going to have a shock when you get there at how much it costs. You really will. So roughly, when you get your money out of your little, your little pocket there, dear, then you could be looking at sort of a pound for a euro. So when they say, oh, we'll go, can I have a... Because you like your drink, don't you, darling? I have noticed that. When you get your pint of lager and they say that's 10 euros, please, that's 10 pounds for a pint of lager. <laughs> I'll be thinking about you while I'm in my caravan in a couple of weeks' time, sipping tea, totally free of charge. Not cost me a penny. Other than the tea bag from Waitrose, of course. Awful. Terrible, terrible rates of exchange with the euro at the moment. 87 cents. In Southampton Airport, I think it was yesterday I heard on the news. 87 cents for one pound. That is, it's awful. It's really bad. Really bad. Don't go. Stay in the UK. Good morning, Christina. Hello to the lovely Christina. Ah, oh, Alan Davy joins us. Good morning, Alan. Are you still doing mobile DJing, Alan? Dear me. Ashley says, oh, yes. How's that going, dear? Your waitrose. Oh, am I supposed to bring you in a waitrose tea bag to sample? I think I am. Oh, I know what I noticed. I bought Marks and Spencer's gold blend tea bags the other day. They're exactly the same as the Waitrose ones. There's a thing. Exactly the same. Same packaging and everything. It just says Marks and Spencer's on the same shape of tea bag. They look, I'm sure they are exactly the same product. Marks and Spencer's gold blend tea bags and Waitrose gold spread. Uh, gold. Uh, gold. Waitrose got gold blend tea bags. Yes, exactly the same, Ashley. Are you coming in tonight? I'll try and remember to bring you a tea bag, maybe two tonight. And then you can have one for breakfast time tomorrow. Breakfast with Ashley Russell. Are you liking the sound of that, lovey? I do hope so. Uh, yeah, he's going to Tenerife with his other half, so that'd be nice. My friend works in Tenerife. Uh, he does the Boy George Experience. Keep an eye out for him in one of the hotels there, OK? And you should uh, uh, go and see him. All right, let's do some um, uh, stories for you this morning. Now, you know that 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 boy, the the, the, the young, aggressive-type boy, who was he, he knocked a woman over, didn't he? Uh, who died? Who died? Um, I think it was a year or so ago, and he's just been to court. And um, while he was in the court, he said... Uh, well, it, it was her fault anyway, but I think it, uh, according to the newspapers, of course, I wasn't there, so I don't know. According to the newspapers, it was kind of the, the way he was in the court. He wasn't very um, sorry. It was a bit like, oh, it was her fault for being in the way, not my fault. Well, maybe so, but you could have been a little bit more compassionate in the court. I think that's where he's come unstuck. A lot of people like this nowadays, you know, won't take the blame. Not my fault, mate. Nothing to do with me. A lot of people who do naughty things and then lie through their teeth to get out of it. It seems to be quite a normal thing now. If I lie, I feel bloody guilty. I really do. But there are people that seem to do it as like a normal activity of their day. They lie through their teeth to get whatever they want. Dishonest is the word I'm looking for. I don't like dishonesty. I really don't. I can't stand people who are dishonest lie through their teeth to get something they want. It's a horrible thing. And I don't like people who don't say sorry or thank you. 
How many times have you let someone out where you're driving along? Okay, mate, mate. And they just drive out. Don't even flash the lights or anything. Strange, isn't it? Anyway, this story on the BBC News um, webpage this morning. Uh, as a widower urges reckless cyclists to learn from the death of his wife, that was uh, in the news this week, who was knocked down and killed by a teenager on a bike with no front brake in East London. A courier explains to the BBC's Laura Lee what made him ride a fixie and why this now, was now changed. Now, I'd never heard of this. I just thought all bikes had brakes. Not the case. Which leads us to the question, why would you want a bike with no brakes? It don't make sense to me. <clears throat> We're about to find out. Michael, not his real name on the BBC site this morning, has worked as a bike courier for the last year and a half and believes the case, which led to an Old Bailey trial and national media attention, has whipped up hatred against cyclists. You must be joking, aren't you? We hate them already. <laughs> we don't need another story to tell us. Have you seen them going through the red lights? I also am a cyclist. I do not go through red lights. I do not terrorise people on the pavement. I don't cut cars up. I don't go down the side of lorries waiting to turn left and then blame the lorry for turning left. But there's a hell of a lot of cyclists. And cyclists are bad news. They are. I'm one of them, but I obey the law. A lot of them don't. The worst place I can give you, if you were, if you were getting into East London somewhere, go to the Old Street Roundabout and watch the cyclists there. They just want to die. I'm sure of it. Old Street Roundabout in London, go and watch them there. Michael says, I've heard other couriers saying to me that they feel on edge and that pedestrians have looked at them differently, he says. Well, I'm not surprised. This is all that boy's fault. This is that teenage boy's fault who's not a teenager anymore. He spends nine to ten hours, this chap, delivering packages on the roads of central London and is paid on a job-by-job -job basis, so weaving in and out of traffic to complete the work as quickly as vital. Michael rides a fixie, a fixed-wheel bicycle, with no front brake. Oh, we've got a phone call coming in. I am surprised at this early stage. Good morning, who's on the line? Chris? Hello, yes. Hi, it's Christina from Portsmouth. How are you? Christina from Portsmouth, how are you, my darling? Oh, it's going to be a lovely, lovely day. I've What's got it? people coming over, going to be doing a barbecue. Oh, and yeah. Three people stay over. Barbecue in this weather? Exactly. Of course, because you haven't got any rain today. Have you ever been to the Portsmouth Cathedral, the Catholic one? Uh, yes, I live about a 10 minute walk from there. Hey. I go there on Easter and Christmas usually. All right. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that a big? Is that a big one? That one? Yes, it's very nice. Very nice. We have uh, actually Portsmouth has two cathedrals. We have an uh, Anglican and also Catholic. Do you know if the Catholic one does does a Latin mass still on a Sunday? As a matter of interest. Um. You know, credo in unum they day. That used one. Used to. They, they do during uh, Christmas season. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Because I was gonna take take a little journey down there in my car one Sunday. I think. Um, uh, just to, just to hear a you know a massive choir and all that business. It's all right at our local church, but um, I'd like to go to a cathedral. I think. Oh, the acoustics are wonderful yeah, there. Yeah, I'm sure they and, are. And, and and at Easter time they hand out um, uh, Cadbury eggs. Oh really? Oh, I'll be straight down there then. I think I can just about have one Cad ca Cadbury chocolate cream egg as part Don't of my worry. slimming it's world. It, it's probably three cents as usual. <laughs> <laughs> How wonderful. You don't cycle, do you, Christina? <clears throat> um, well, actually, uh, no, because in Portsmouth, the cyclists are horrible. Oh, you have a problem? And I purposely, I purposely use the zebra crossings, the pedestrian crossings, and I go extra slow just to make them stop. Good girl. Good girl. They're really bad in London, I tell you. 
I mean, really yeah. bad. It's frightening, and I don't know. You know, I'm sorry. I, I I don't mean this in an in a nasty way, but when I see a cyclist has been crushed by, oh, we've lost her. Oh, that, that's just that just dropped out that call. Do you want to try and call back, darling? You got cut off then. Cut off. Let's just try and. Uh... Hmm. Got cut off then. She'll probably see if she rings back in a minute. What was I just saying? Oh, God, I just forgot what was I saying. I just, I just went off on one then, didn't I? Anyway, we were talking about these um, uh, fixed, fixed bicycles. A fixed wheel bicycle has a single gear, no free wheel mechanism and dropped handlebars. The rear fixed wheel of a fixie, which a rider can slow down using the pedals, count as a brake. There we are. Christina's calling back now. There we are. Did you get cut off there, my darling? Did you get cut off? Yes, I did. Never mind. You're back now, my love. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> you were saying. You were saying about your cyclists there. Uh... Yes. Yeah. No, uh, Portsmouth is one, of the, is one of the most dangerous cities for cyclists, they, so they say. Um, I live right near a dangerous roundabout as well, and... Uh, you just see them spinning and, you know, just zooming around with not even a care in the world. Yeah. Um, but, um, and then, of course, uh, my other half is always ranting that um, cyclists don't pay road fund tax, but they expect yeah. to have cycle lanes. I, I, I don't have so much problem with, the, with them not paying tax or things like that. It has to be said that there's probably a lot of poor people with cycles you know because they can't afford a car therefore they wouldn't be able to afford insurance i mean how else are they going to get around so i do see that side of it but they need to be fined more they've got to be yeah. fined for this it's just ridiculous the way they carry on and i was just um, saying sorry Paul smith was doing a, a project the police were actually fining them if they didn't have um lights on lights on their um on their on their uh bikes while driving them at night um, and uh, the uh, Deliveroo's people were, um, oh, yeah. all, after a couple of them got fined, uh, the whole company down here um, issued them uh, lights. Um, but, uh, I mean, you could pick up you could pick up safety lights at Poundland. Yeah, I know, I, I mean, know. it's not and... going to break the bank. No, I know. And wouldn't you think that they, they would worry about their safety? I don't get it. I really don't, because you seriously cannot see cyclists at night with no lights on. It just makes me die. It really does. Well, they'll die if they don't get the lights on, won't they? And then they'll cost the NHS money once they get rushed to hospital. Of course, of course, you know. <laughs> so, unfortunately, unfortunately, the NHS can't, can't you know, assess stupidity fine. No, it's just, just madness. Christina, where did you come from originally? Originally, Texas. Oh, yes, I remember now. Home of Dallas. Yes, exactly, where we say howdy on a regular basis. Howdy, howdy. I miss JR. <laughs> I miss that new series of Dallas. I thought it was excellent as a reboot. Yeah, it wasn't I too it was bad. Good, yeah, but... well, one of my friends from one of my friends from university lived next door to Patrick Duffy. <sighs> so I, I've actually seen Patrick Duffy in a dressing gown. Wow. Picking up his newspaper. What? 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 Front ways or back ways? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, hey. <laughs> it's amazing what happens when you look out the window. Oh, um, it is. <laughs> well, I don't think we'll ever see that back now. That's it. They, they tried. Re, they they tried Dallas. Uh, they didn't get the numbers. I don't think we'll ever see that come back again, will we? Now that one. Uh, not with Larry Hagman passing. Oh well, no, think. not with Larry, obviously. But I, ca I can't see them pulling it all together again somehow. And and I think Linda Gray's doing too many other other things now, anyway. So. Yeah, she she's um she does loads of stuff, doesn't she? Yeah. Remember that time I met her a couple of years ago? Oh, that was that was just something else. It really was. Yeah, she uh, when I used to live in Twickenham, she uh, she was performing in Wimbledon, I believe it was. Wimbledon, yes, yes, Wimbledon so. Theatre. Oh, so yeah, that was only so. a couple of years ago you were there, was it? Yes, yes. That's yeah, when. That's yeah. where I met her. I waited round the back. <laughs> yeah, I've got a little video and everything. Have you seen it? Yes, I have. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nice lady. And then she just disappeared into town like a normal person. I don't know what I expected, whether I expected this flash car to come round the corner and pick her up or something like that. I don't know. 
Did she get into an Uber? <laughs> no, they don't, I don't think they had Uber. That that Uber thing has happened very quickly. True <clears> enough, yeah. It's only been around for a couple of years, and um, uh, well, I mean, you see them all driving around at night, not not having a clue where they're going, and sort of swinging across the road at the last minute. But they're always touching these sat navs, and I've I've got a story here which I'll read. Um, before the show's out about sat navs, there's a, I think, a new law which I'm going to read out in a moment, Christine. Ah, oh, yes. Well, they yeah. also are trying to uh, put it now into the driving test. What to use a sat nav? Uh, yeah, yeah. How to how to use uh, phones and sat navs while while driving. Ah, oh, right. Okay. Do, it do was you... um, it was it was on the it was on BBC. It was on the BBC or South Today or something BBC like that. BBC News, yeah. yeah. South Today, I get that here. Oh, I'm in the middle here, so I can get South Today and also London Tonight. I've got I've got two BBC ones here because we're kind of in the middle of the um, of the two different regions. Are you any good at finding your way from A to B? Are you, Christina? I'm not. I'm useless. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm, I'm pretty good at finding. <laughs> You're good it. at that. <laughs> My dad. Yeah, when yeah, he used... yeah. I can I can read an underground map as well. You know, ah. it's even color coded. Well, you're all the way there, aren't you? I'm no good. I am completely useless at finding my way from A to B. Absolutely <laughs> useless, and I get scared. I know this sounds stupid. Uh-huh. I could be driving somewhere and I get lost, and the only thing going through my mind is, what if I'm never able to find my way back home now? That's in the back of my mind. How stupid is that? The island's only about hundred mile across. <laughs> but Chris, I have a I have a I have a rant today. Yes. Bad landlords. Yes. Bad landlords should be named and shamed. Agree. I absolutely agree. I had a boiler go out and I haven't really had hot water for about two to three weeks. And I've sent emails, I've gone into the rental office and complained, and they said, oh, the email got lost in, 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 the work order got lost in the email. That's happened now three times. That's shocking. Can you do anything about that? Well, I've got a horrible combi boiler, and uh, yeah, I, I can get lukewarm water if I turn on the gas, uh, you know, turn Oh, no, on no, the I meant... I meant legally. Can you get any money back for that or what? Um, I don't know. It might be more hassle than it's worth. Mm, this is this but... is where I am sometimes. You know, we're, we're not not obviously not with landlords and things, but sometimes I look at a problem, maybe something's gone wrong, and I look at it and I think, oh, this is going to be more hassle. Chuck it away and buy a new one. I'm a bit like that myself. I know what you mean. But... But three <clears throat> weeks, it's taken them three weeks, and I've got three people coming over and staying tonight. That's so, shocking. So, you know, it's kind of like I'm going to offer them a nice lukewarm shower, you know? <laughs> I'm oh, that's absolutely shocking. fuming. Yeah, I had a boiler go. Uh, I've got one place up north, the rest of them are down here. I had a boiler go the next day. Well, well, first of all, water. You know, the water doesn't work or the heating won't come on. The next day they had someone round there who told me it needed a new boiler. The old one had got a crack in it or something. I don't know anything about plumbing. And um, it was ordered and it was in within a week. You know, obviously you've got to wait for the boiler to come because they yeah. have to order it and then arrange for it to be put in. But it was done within a week. Oh, yeah. In my yeah. mind, always keep the tenant happy because you don't want to move. I, I, I don't want anyone to move out. Every time someone moves out, moves out, and someone moves in, that costs a small fortune to me. Every time exactly. that happens, exactly. Yeah. So you just want to keep it going all the time. Yeah, and I've been oh, I've been terrible. a very good, happy tenant for three years. Yeah, I think Paid a little rent on time, everything. Mm. You know, and uh, does your rent... mean, it took it took them eighteen months to fix the, to fix the back fence. It took them six months to get the back door to lock. Um, when I moved in here, I had a three-page snag list. I think it's time to move on, my love. So, yes, I think I'll move back to London. Would you move back to London? <laughs> uh, yeah, or the suburbs. Yeah. Why London? Or, or, I, or, or I can always start reading in Reading. <laughs> oh, reading. Don't go to Reading. It's a dump. <laughs> Don't go and live in. There's around Reading is isn't too bad. There's some places yeah. around Reading. Uh, Caversham's quite nice, or uh, Oxford, Ox, uh, parts of Oxford. But I quite like the country. I couldn't live in London again. No way. All those buildings around me all the time, and people, Being hundreds and hundreds of people. I Airplanes. don't like. Eh? <laughs> 
the airplanes. Oh, the air- oh, the airplanes are okay. I used to have Concorde fly over here twice a day. <laughs> yeah, it would it would be dead on time every morning at eleven o'clock and every night at seven o'clock. Without fail, that plane would come over, bang on time every time. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's uh, yeah, it's a bit of a change not having um, airplanes. But I mean, I live five minutes away from the beach, oh, so um, I got um, as you saw from my pictures, I uh, uh, saw the uh, the yeah, new the, uh, ship come in. Saw the big and, boat come uh, in, didn't you? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, wonderful. Yes, uh, and then, uh, but yeah, yeah, we just have um, the uh, the horns from the ships going and, and uh, ferries tooting every five minutes. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's a loud noise, isn't it? That one. Do you remember the noise that used to come off the lighthouses as well? You got a noise from the lighthouse when the fog. Oh, a, a humming a, noise, yeah. Uh, like that all night long. Oh yeah. dear. Yeah, I live near a power station uh, depot. <laughs> oh, do you? Well, you, we, yeah. I remember. I always remember those lighthouse noises when we used to stay at the various pontins all over the country, um, at least you know, <laughs> you know, d- d- down in England. And um, we'd be by the sea, and whenever it was foggy, the, the noise would come on as well as the light flashing on the yeah, lighthouse. Yeah, because of the humidity yeah. and the electricity. Yeah. Apparently, they're... someone someone explained it to me recently. Oh, is that what it is? Like... They're, 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 most of those are automatic now, lighthouses. There's no Yeah, they light... are. Yeah, because yeah. they, they couldn't get people to to, uh, to do the jobs. Oh, it must be very lonely <laughs> sitting up there. I think I'd be all right. I could just do longer shows. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But then, you know, doing pub quizzes and DJing and, you know, karaoke. I mean, you'd miss it. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I do like all the jobs I do, but um, sometimes I think, oh, I might like a bit of a quiet life. I'm certainly quite quiet when I'm not doing this. I'm I'm very, very quiet. I sit there and read. And there's no television on or anything like that in the living room. Yeah. Uh, Things change as you get older, I think, Christina. Yep, yep. Well, I'm going to go out and enjoy my lovely day or at least finish cleaning and getting ready for house guests. Good luck with your barbecue. And... Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I just wanted to rant about about bad landlords. Thank you very much, darling. I hope you f- I hope you get that sorted out soon. That hot water. Meanwhile, I will send you over two flasks of very very hot water. <laughs> yeah, I might need a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> one of those nice waitress tea bags. <laughs> <laughs> have you not had one before? Oh yeah, I have. Oh, yes, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got it. I've got it in my pantry. Waitrose um, Gold Blends. That's the I, ones you I, want. I'm a waitrose girl. Good I'm girl. I'm a waitrose girl. I mean, uh, or you know, who, can, who can resist a cup? Who can resist a nice cappuccino while you're walking doing your shopping? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks ever so much for calling in, Christina. Lovely to talk to you, my darling. Okay, have a good one. Cheerio. Bye-bye bye bye now. now. Christina bye. calling in from uh, Portsmouth, where the audio. All the sailor boys are there as well, aren't they? Down in Portsmouth. Uh, just going back to the uh, bicycle story. How are we doing on time there? Let's have a look at that. Oh, 48 minutes, aren't we? Um, yes, a fixed wheel bicycle, single gear, no free wheel mechanism, dropped handlebars, a rear of a uh, fixed wheel bike. Um, the pedals count as a brake, so presumably, you know, you, you. I mean, how do you pedal backwards if it's going forward? I suppose, yeah, you can just push your feet down and that does that is that as good as a break i don't know i've never been on one uh michael says it takes a long time to get used to riding a bike without brakes people do it because it's the personal sensation of control with the bike you never get that quick in london it's more about how you cycle i think most couriers who spend hours riding every day have the credentials he does admit you can probably slow down quicker with a front brake so there we are I wouldn't advise it for an 18-year-old um, kid who's been watching cycle videos. So that's how that works, you see. Um, they That back wheel, you kind of push backwards. Um, interesting. Interesting. It really is. Uh, Michael goes on to say, people just step out in front of us and expect us to stop. Well, that's not, that's not just cy- cycles, I'm afraid, is it? You know, I mean, this has been going on with cars for ages now. People literally just step out into the... I had it. Oh, I had this yesterday. It's something similar yesterday. No one stepped out into the road. But I got to this level crossing. 
There's a bloke standing there. He's looking at his phone. I've stopped. I give him a little toot. And he's still looking at his phone. He's stopped. I open the window. Go on, over you go, mate. Nothing. Nothing. So I then off I went. At that point, he looked up and started walking. Not a word. Not a word. And then looking in my rear view mirror, I spotted he had earphones on as well. I mean, how stupid can you be? But people do literally step out in front of cars and bikes and expect you to stop. And although I think about that, that cyclist boy, you could have had a little bit more compassion. Did the lady literally just step out in front of him? Wasn't part of that earth fault. Well, probably it was. But still, it wasn't necessary for him to be so hard. Well, it's her fault anyway, speaking like that. Well, it's her fault anyway. Well, it might well have been her fault. Yeah, well, I'm really sorry. The lady stepped out in front of me and I'm sorry it's happened, but it wasn't my fault. Rather than it's her fault anyway. Maybe this is just the way that people are brought up now. That's how they talk. It's someone else's fault all the time, isn't it? So there we are. All right, some more of your messages there. Uh, good morning to Ray Reynolds, who joins us this morning. Morning, Ray. Timothy Thomas. Hello, Timothy. He says, good morning. Have a lovely day and weekend. It's going to be a nice day today. I know it is. Going to have a cup of tea and my pills in a minute. I'm 15 minutes late for my pills. Never mind, I'll have them in a minute. Adam says, ask her to check the pressure on the boiler. Ah, oh, yeah, that's a, that's a thing. That's a thing, Christina. The trouble is I, I don't like to give advice like that because if people do something wrong, so it's all very well you saying that, Adam. Now, I happen to know what that is, OK? On your boiler, there's a little meter. <clears throat> I think it goes from one to six. And there's a needle, which needs to be, if I'm right in thinking, between about one and a half. So the, the meter goes from one to six. You want the needle on about one and a half, somewhere around one and a half. Not in the red. That's too much. Or not below the one. That's too little. You want it on around about one and a half. OK. If it's not on one and a half, it's unlikely to have gone up, but it's probably gone down. Then there will be a tap in there somewhere to turn water on. And you turn the tap, you, you'll hear the water flow like that. And then the meter will start going up and you turn it off again when it gets to one. The tap is somewhere in the boiler. Um, uh cupboard should be somewhere in the boiler cupboard a little tap in there of some sort on a pipe like that okay you turn it on you get the meter up to about one and a half and then maybe try that then i think that's what uh, adam's saying adam the plumber you see i mean she would have had you out adam but it, it, she shouldn't have to pay for that it's the landlord's duty to get the blooming boiler working Tim says, I deal with landlords all the time and it's a battle. I have to keep an eye open all the time for what they are up to. Dividing two bedrooms into six. Oh, that is outrageous, isn't it? That's terrible. Ah, oh, Christina says she's already tried that, the boiler pressure. So there we are. Hmm. Oh, well, I do hope that gets sorted out for you soon, my darling. One more um, little story for you today before we disappear, boys and girls. And this is the sat-nav story that I told you earlier on to say I was going to read out. Using a mobile phone to navigate in the car, this is in this morning's Daily Mail, could now result in a ban and a £200 fine for the driver. Police chiefs have warned. So I'm glad that at last this problem has been realised. Bought on, I have to say, I'm sure by the Uber drivers. The amount of people I see on the way home with one hand on the wheel, forehead up against the window, doing their sat-nav with the other hand while travelling along the Houston Road. Houston Road. It says a clampdown on motorists using phones to call and text that began in April also extends to using mobiles as well as sat-navs. Drivers are warned as the bank holiday exodus gets underway. Though it's not illegal to run a navigation app while driving, motorists can face prosecution if they touch the device while it's at the wheel. Now, the 
sat-nav I now use is Waze, W-A-Z-E, and it's an excellent sat-nav. You don't need to touch it. That being said, you could if you wanted to, and I'll tell you why. So you set your sat-nav, okay? Before you start, you click go, and it tells you where you're going to go. Turn left, turn right, go straight on, do a U-turn. You do not have to touch that sat-nav at all anymore until you get to work or wherever you're going. If it does a reroute, it will say, you have been rerouted, this will save you five minutes. No need to touch it. However, there's an orange button on it. I think it's an orange button. And if you see something happening around you, like uh, a car stopped on the motorway, or a police car ahead, you can touch that, click vehicle stopped, click send, and it will send a message to the people at Waze who will include it in everyone else's, what everyone else is looking at. But now you've touched the phone. Well, you can't do that. So I wonder how they're going to cope with that, the people at Waze. Well, that, I think they need, they need to have voice thing on there. So car stopped, hard shoulder. That you should be able to do that. Or maybe you, you have a like a, a trigger word like Waze and it will say, yes, car stopped hard shoulder or police van stopped on motorway. Something like that. I don't know if they can do it with voice yet. I'll have to look at mine. Actually, shall I have a look now? Drop me to have a loop. Shall I have a loop? I don't know if you can do it with the voice. Oh, there's a lot of messages coming through there. Unpopular this morning. First time for weeks, to be honest. Let's have a look. Waze. So we've got Waze, right? This is Waze. Waze. Can you see that? Uh, it, I have to turn the thing. That, there's the oh, there, there's the orange button. It's an orange button there. I don't know if you can see that. Can you? There you can. Just about. Orange button. See that orange button? So you would push that. Now, what's this here? Voice direction. Sound on. Listening on speaker. I don't know. Um. Oh, hang on. Look. What's this here? Vehicle stopped on road. How can I help? Vehicle stopped on road. Looking for vehicle on road. No, well, it doesn't work. I mean, it does, it's doing voice, but it's not doing the options that it would do if you press the red button. But you mustn't. That's the thing. Here's the police telling us we mustn't touch the phone while we're driving along. And that would include at traffic lights. Don't think because you're stopped at a traffic lights, you're suddenly able to start touching the phone or put a tune on or play. Or do, You mustn't touch that phone for the whole journey that you're making in and out. I happen to know this because I asked a policeman who I know on Wednesday night a little question about if I was to do like Facebook Live in the car, what's the situation with that? And he said, no, not good because it could be argued that you are giving your concentration to the broadcast rather than doing the driving. So don't do it. So that's fair enough. There's your answer there. So you mustn't touch that phone when you're out in the car. A spokesman for the National Police Chiefs Council in this Daily Mail this morning said, if, some, if an officer determines that a driver using their sat-nav hindered the ability to control the car, the driver could face prosecution. These warnings expose inconsistencies before the more lenient penalties for using a traditional or built-in sat-nav and the harsher punishments involving mobile phone use. So what they're saying there, um, I think, is, I mean, presumably, and that, that that's the end of that story there, you know, presumably, um, operating a sat-nav would be exactly the same as operating a um, a mobile phone in the car, wouldn't it? Hmm? So there we are. Um, Okie doke. Let's have a look. Righty ho. Right, let's do today's birthdays, boys and girls. And then we would disappear. And then I can go swimming. I can't, I'm going to have another cup of tea before I go swimming. I can't believe it's only 20 past 10. I must have been very early this morning doing the show this morning. 
All right. Uh, today's birthday then. Happy birthday this morning to Jack Matthews, who's 60 years old today. Happy birthday, Jack. Have a wonderful time, sir. Congratulations. He got the 60. Another 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, at least 80 years left for you, Jack. Carry on, sir. Carry on. All right. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to uh, Andy Booksy, who's 28 years old tonight. Loving the uh, the outfit you've got on there. All right. Hello to Dean Rogers. He was a, a black cap customer for many, many years. So he's a nice chap. Happy birthday, Dean. Hope you have a nice day today. Uh, Marie Dyer Campbell. A nice, lovely young lady who used to come along to uh, karaoke at uh, all the Belushis. I think she's been to all of them when I was doing those. Hammersmith, London Bridge, um, Fulham, when it was in Fulham, and uh, Camden as well. I think you came to Camden as well. Happy birthday, Marie Dyer Campbell. Uh, Nina. Hello, Nina. Nina Trencana is 49 years old today. I didn't know you was younger than me. Happy birthday, Nina. All right. Richard Taylor is 58 years old today. Paul Wright, it's his birthday today. Happy birthday, Paul. And also Paul Smith is 36 years old today. So happy birthday to you all, boys and girls. Here comes the song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Jack, Andy, Dean, Jack, Marie, Nina, Richard, Paul and Paul. Happy birthday to you. I'm getting more... Have you noticed how I'm able now to get more and more names in? More and more names in while I'm doing the happy birthday song. All right? I think some of you had your um, broadcast, your reception interrupted today. So sorry about that, gang. I don't know why that was. It looks OK at this end. There's nothing sort of going wrong at this end. So... Fingers crossed um, uh, uh, that wasn't too bad for you. That's it for the show today. Thank you very much. Uh, being a Friday night, I'll be hosting karaoke this evening. That's at Central Station Bar, Wolfdale Road, Kings Cross. Friday night, karaoke at Central Station Bar, Wolfdale Road, Kings Cross. Starts at 8.30 and goes right the way through until midnight. That's every Friday. Don't forget this coming Sunday, uh, we've got an extended karaoke. That's at the Camden Eye in Camden Town. Starts at 8 o'clock and finishes at 2 a.m. Thank you, Adam. He's saying goodbye and so am I. Have a lovely Friday and thank you very much for joining me and sharing the show on your walls. Cheerio now.